Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, big shout out to Trevor. Isn't he doing a great job tonight? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and big thank you to Grace and Kevin for the invitation to speak here tonight. Uh, music as a storytelling device is, a, is an interesting evolution of storytelling and music as art forms. Um, so I'm gonna kind of break them each down and kind of go through what each of them mean to me and sort of hopefully at the end we'll all come together and meet in the same place. Um, as Ke as uh, Trevor was saying, I'm an Imagineer. I work for Walt Disney Imagineering. Walt Disney Imagineering is the design firm, the design arm of the Walt Disney Company that creates, brainstorms, designs and delivers um, experiences to our Disney theme parks, resorts, and cruise ships around the world. Being an Imagineer is a pretty incredible job, and for the past 30 years, I've not only got to be an Imagineer, but I got to focus on music. Um, music as part of a storytelling team is a pretty incredible and pretty daunting responsibility at times. Um, Walt Disney had a quote that said, you know, it's kind of fun to make the impossible possible. And that continues to be a motto we have at Walt Disney Imagineering. Um, and when we start to think of it in that way, I think of this kid some 50 years ago, standing at Walt Disney World, not having any idea what was out in front of him. Um, I hope my sister forgives me for putting that photo up and having it streamed live. Sorry, Sandy. Um, but Walt Disney Imagineering, um, has given me the opportunity to examine storytelling and the roots of storytelling through music in a couple different lenses. You know, for me, I get to explore world cultures and go around the world and put the lens of music, you know, within that. And, you know, I'm very fortunate to have the role I do and get to work with the people I do. Um, a variety of cultures, a variety of inputs, and a, and a total variety of artists I get to uh, approach and try and bring them into the storytelling realm we have at Imagineering. So let's talk a little bit about story. You know, we all have our stories. Um, today is a story. You know, we're all sharing this story here tonight. But let's talk about your story or maybe my story. Maybe you woke up this morning and you were a little grumpy and your story started maybe not on the right foot that you wanted to because you woke up earlier than you wanted to or maybe you were a little hungry when you went to bed. You woke up even hungrier. But after a little breakfast and maybe a little, you know, hug from your wife or your mom or your dad, your story changes and it gets a little bit better. Each of our stories is incredibly personal. Um, my story starts every day with my wife and my children and I'd like you to meet Winston and Cooper. Winston and Cooper are our family pets and they are terrific partners and I tell stories to Winston and Cooper all the time. Now, admittedly, Winston and Cooper aren't always the best listeners. <laughs> Sometimes by the end of my story, this is what they look like. Um, they're happy to take a nap. Um, but it brought me to the question of telling stories to start at the beginning. Why do we tell stories? Anybody? Anybody have any ideas why we might tell, tell stories? Well, for me, I went and took a look and sort of tried to figure out where stories began. What were the origins of stories? Even before ancient man was able to have a common language, we told stories. You know, admittedly, back in the day, some of those stories were really important and they were mostly about survival. You know, trying to convey to your friend, hey, where is that, you know, that berry we ate yesterday? That was pretty good. Or, hey, did you see that big hairy thing that ate Larry? Have you seen that around anymore? I'm, I, I really want to avoid that guy. Um, but my story today is starting from the me standpoint. You know, I talked about Winston and Cooper and how my day began and, you know, I was a little grumpy this morning, I'll fully admit it. Um, you know, but after a hug from my wife and hugging my sons and, you know, a little cup of coffee, and then I gave some love to Winston and Cooper, my day got better. Well, my day got better when I fed Winston and Cooper. They were happy to see me when I came out and uh, actually brought, brought them some food. Um, now, when we got into storytelling at that point, I was talking with Kevin a little bit at the, at the beginning of this whole process about where do stories lead us, and we've talked about why humans tell stories just a little bit, and I'm going to go a little bit further on that. The reason I believe some of those you know, stories got told early on, as I said, was about survival, but it was also about some of the same things I just talked about today, the everyday things, you know, sharing the common experiences we have in life and sharing those common moments that bring us together. 
You know, and some of those stories get carried forward. Some are oral traditions that actually tell the stories of our ancestors and have been told for thousands of years. Um, and that brings me to the point of how people tell stories. You know, right now I'm telling you a story through an oral tradition, spoken word. Linguists and biologists have looked at the human condition and they, there's no real solid estimate about when humans actually began to talk. And you think about that from a storytelling standpoint. How do you communicate without being able to talk? Because they reach back and they say it's probably tens of thousands, if not millions of years ago, that humans actually may have spoken their first words. We don't have any good records of it. There wasn't you know, a phone to talk into and make a voice recording. It, the voice recorders, you know, any kind of recording device, wasn't actually created until the middle of the 19th century. So as we started talking about story, I said, OK, how do humans tell stories? Oral tradition, that's one. That's the spoken word. We're doing it today. People have been doing it for tens of thousands, if not millions of years. Another storytelling form is painting. Um, all across Europe, in Asia, in Africa, they have great records. Now, we may not have a great records of when the first people began to speak, but we do have some pretty good records that scientists have found about when early man began to paint. Some 40,000 years ago, they've discovered paintings on the walls of caves in France, on stone tablets in Namibia, even on rocks in Australia. And these tell the story and start to, to, start to basically show you the storytelling prowess of early man. And it's pretty impressive. But that wasn't the only way. Then we finally moved on, after man had been doing their own artwork all over, about 5,000 years ago, the human condition came together and we started putting together a written language. Early cuneiforms, hieroglyphs, and eventually a common alphabet, depending on the language or the region you were in. And we came up with a written word and we were able to, 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 to write down our ideas and continue to share them with our family and friends. Which brings me to telling stories with music. Um, the one thing about music that is really fascinating to me is that those other forms of storytelling are wonderful, but they're a little passive when it comes to the receiver. You, you take in whatever story I'm telling you. You may have emotional reaction, you may not. Um, but telling stories with music is kind of a visceral experience. Um, when I first started thinking about when did we first hear you know, about stories with music, I think about the lullabies. I think about just the little simple stories our parents used to sing to us, or maybe you as parents sing to your kids. Um, to put people, you know, to put people to sleep. That sounds wrong. <laughs> to put your children and help your children fall asleep at night. I sing them to myself inside my head. I sing them to myself, and it actually does. It's a very calming, a very calming moment to uh, sit down, focus yourself, and actually have a little tune play through your head. No, we're not going to sing any lullabies. Kevin and I talked about it. I didn't want it's. We're midway through the program. We didn't want to bring that up. Start every start a nap time. That's uh, not not quite right. So here are some of the earliest music instruments that have actually been found. Remember I said the written word was only started maybe five, maybe, let's give it, let's be generous. Let's say the written word was started about 10,000 years ago. Here's two examples of flutes that man carved and were found um, in Europe. And the carbon dating dates the flutes around 42,000 years ago, well before we had an organized language, you know, in, right, in written form. Pretty remarkable. As we go on, we come to find, and I was trying to figure out, why do we think early man was actually trying to have you, you know, to play an instrument, to create music? The best idea I can come up with is something I heard this morning. I walked outside, um, we live in Southern California, and we drove up today, but as I walked outside with the dogs, um, I started hearing a bird sing, and I realized that was probably the impetus and the inspiration and to want to create music, the music they heard in nature. And I thought more about it. I thought, what else has a song in nature? I've stuck my head in the ocean. I've heard a whale song. I've walked through a forest, and I've heard tree frogs singing. And it's a beautiful sound. And they have a chorus of cicadas singing along with them. And I realized, I can only imagine what early man felt when they heard those songs and it stirred emotions in them the way we have music stir emotion in us now. So we've been sitting for a while. Um, 
So I wanted to do a little bit of a visceral exercise with everybody in the room. You don't have to, but feel free to get up. Uh, we're gonna do a little marching. And I wanna do a little experiment with you and talk about the power of music and how it kind of can take us on and channel us, even as a group. So if you want to, stand up. We're gonna do a little marching in place. Don't knock your friends over. What I want you to do, what I want you to do is, this is a short clip, it's not gonna be long, and the video won't be on you for very long, um, is we're going to march in place. So I'm gonna play a piece of music, and I wanna let the music kind of take you along. Go ahead and march. Kind of feel how the music is directed. Yeah, there you go. I like that. And your arms start swinging. I didn't even plan this. Oh, look at you. Kevin, I think we need to get a marching band together here. This is wild. Okay, okay, stop right there. Don't sit down just yet. Don't sit down just yet. As you did that, your brain kind of fell in line with the music and the motor motions you were making, and you were getting little hits of dopamine in your brain, and your body's going, yeah, that's it. All right, I can do this. This is easy. Okay, we're going to do it again. I'm going to play you the same piece of music, but this time, I want you to try and not follow the music. I want, I'm hearing some gasps. Sorry, I didn't mean this. <laughs> I was told there'd be no math. No. Um, what I want you to do is try and not follow the music and kind of notice what your body does. So here we go. That same piece of music. You've heard it before. But this time, stay away from the beat. Come on. Oh, you're, oh there's, that's it. You know, this is a lot hard. Wait a minute. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you for humoring me, sit down. Please have a seat, please have a seat. Um, okay, that was a lot harder than I expected it to be. Um, and that is gonna be on YouTube now, forever and ever, <laughs> me dancing like that. Um, but I realized, and I wanted to sort of make the point with the people in the room that there's a cognitive kind of disconnect that happens when your body tries to fight against some music it's hearing. Um, especially when you get into it. If you're an adult and you've been driving for any amount of time, you may have had a favorite song come on the radio, and the next thing you know, the music told your brain to push that foot to the pedal a little bit more. And Let's just say, when you get pulled over the next time, now you have a little bit of information, and you can just tell the, you know, the very kind police officer, who I'm sure will understand, that it was a biological imperative. You had no choice. You had to speed. Um, the music was telling you to do so. so all of that being said, it's wonderful how we are kind of innately musical creatures. Um, in that, I like to believe that uh, that statement has a lot more truth in it than I, I like to believe sometimes. If you think about yourself, we're all kind of rhythm machines. We have heartbeats beating every one of us right now. Hopefully everyone, every, good, yeah. Um, your heart's beating, pumping blood through your body. That's keeping a rhythm. You're breathing in, you're breathing out, you know, your brain's sending your lungs a rhythm to keep the oxygen flowing. And we all got up this morning and we'll all go to sleep tonight following our circadian rhythm. So humans are kind of rhythm machines when you really think about it. The beauty of that is when you combine a visual image, you, you give yourself some more input. I mean, we were doing physical input with that march. If we take and give you a visual image now, we can start to create some other ideas that happen. So come with me. We're going we're gonna to go on a little journey. I'm going to take you to an alley in a big city. And hmm, kind of scary, maybe, maybe not. You know, take a look at the image and kind of soak it in and kind of think about it. I'm going to play you two pieces of music. Now, after each piece of music plays, it's going to be the same image. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you feel, what you think, what the music told you about what's going on here. Ah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So as you hear this music, and as you look at this place, what is the music starting to tell you? Any ideas? France, France, I heard that. Why France? The instrument, the instrument. Okay. Um, what are some of the more basic things? Do you, 
Does the music make this place feel scarier or safer? Safer. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Um, does the music make you want to go down this alley? Maybe, maybe it's not as scary as it once was. Yeah? Anything happening in here? What do you think? Restaurant. Romance. Ooh la la. All right. I love it. Okay. We're going to stick with the same image. Remember those thoughts? You know? Ah, oh, romance. Mm, yeah. Now we're going to play some different music, and I want to see how it changes your perception, how it changes your story of this place. Okay, what's happening here now? <laughs> the Cape Crusade. Um, what else? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the other ones. Conflict. Conflict. Is this place feel safe still, or is it maybe a little dangerous? Yeah. Isn't it amazing how a it made you feel, but b look at all these little stories you guys created out of thin air. You were presented with this image not more than two minutes ago, and with a couple different pieces of music, you started weaving new ideas. You started creating new stories. Well done, well done, you guys are impressive. Emotional storytelling. Well, here is what music does best. Music, when it comes, especially when it's married with an image, is an emotional storyteller. Everybody here, anybody seen a movie in the past five years? <laughs> All right, you laugh, but I had somebody in an audience once, no, I don't like movies, okay. Um, no judgment, that's fine. Um, if you ever get a chance when you're at home, the next time you're watching your favorite movie, look at a movie that you've watched for years. Take five minutes of the movie, turn the sound off, and just watch the screen and watch the image. It becomes a different movie-going experience. Music is the emotional storyteller giving you cues about what's going to happen, how, how you're supposed to feel about what happened, and where things are going. So as an emotional storyteller, music has this wonderful power to kind of, as I say, it kind of bypasses your brain and goes straight to your heart. Um, it kind of taps into us in a way that is hard to explain, but I, I kind of tie it back to the human rhythm machine idea um, that we are all connected to music in a way that we don't really understand, but it is a great tool for emotional storytelling. Um, so speaking of emotional storytelling, my wife sent me these videos a couple, a couple days ago, and I said, well, this is fun. I, I'm, let me close out with this. This is Winston. You met Winston earlier, waiting for food. Um, and I put a couple pieces of music to uh, Winston's video just so we can have a little fun and uh, give Winston a little more character and a little more you know, bravado so you can see his range as a, as a dog actor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not the impression I want to leave with you of Winston. Um, so I found another piece of music, and this is more, and I think my wife actually told me the other day, she goes, this is now Winston's official theme. <laughs> I love that dog. Um, so really, as I wrap up here, what I wanted to sort of share with you is we're all storytellers. Each and every one of you have a story, and, and each of these students have a story. Um, I'm honored to be on the stage with them. They are an impressive group of people. Um, but also, there is no greater story, no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you, Maya Angelou. Um, and so I want you to remember, every day is a story in your life. And not every day is good, not every day is bad. But if you're writing the story of your life and you come upon a time where you're not sure where to go, why don't you put on a piece of music? It might change your point of view and give you some new ideas. Have a great night.